So, today, Kodak Retinet 2A. This was, um, oh, it was almost automatic exposure. It's a match needle arrangement. The, uh, you could say that the shutter and aperture were programmed. Basically, you were shifting the shutter speed and the aperture settings as you moved this dial. And you were moving that dial to line up the meter needle with the indicator in the finder. This one's here because it uh, has recently been discovered and it's, the owner decided it probably needed a service and it certainly does. The fault as described to me was that one of the lenses was cracked and I suggested that that probably wasn't the case, that most likely it was just the line of the shutter blades that the person was seeing and that appears to be the case. But once I've got it fully apart, I'll know for certain. But the Retinet 2A, well, yeah, it's an interesting sort of a camera. Um, I don't like it as much as the Retinet 2B, but um, it's certainly capable enough. I mean, all cameras are really limited by their lenses. Uh, this has a, the Riemar lens which was, that's a name, that was a trade name of Kodak's that uh, didn't really apply to a particular design, but it's a triplet. Uh, most of them are made by Schneider. Uh, in the latter days, some of them were made by Rodenstock. And it's a 45mm f2.8. So a nice bright lens, and this one looks to me to be in quite good condition. It's not uncommon for the front surface to be somewhat marked up um, just from atmospheric contamination, fingerprints, uh, splashes, sea spray, things of that nature. That does awful things to front surfaces. But the camera itself, what do we got? Well, it looks, looks quite neat and tidy. There's no sign of anyone's repair sticker in there. The camera actually appears to function reasonably well. I can see that the shutter blades are oily, which means that it might well work on a nice warm day, but in the depths of winter you pull the thing out of the cupboard and give it a click and nothing will happen at all. So I've got to set to and get this thing apart. Now one of the liabilities with these particular cameras is the meter. Uh, it's fairly unprotected once you remove the top cover. There's a fair bit of handling involved in handling the camera. It's easy to accidentally damage that meter. I'm going to be very careful and hopefully avoid that altogether. Looking down at the retainer ring there, it looks to me like that's been... that someone's touched that up with some black paint all the way around. Um, that's not helpful. I'm sure it'll stop the retaining ring from accidentally rattling loose. It's also going to make it awkward to get the thing loose so I can take the shutter out. So I will first have to put a few drops of solvent in there in the hope to soften whatever it was that they put there. It just looks like black paint to me and I can see that it's bridging the uh, from the retaining ring through to that uh, rear group there. So yeah, that's a bit of a nuisance, potentially a bit of a nuisance, but forewarned is forearmed. So a drop or two of solvent there may prevent that being a problem at all. Otherwise it'll be a fight. Well, I used my spanner to get that thing loose. This is a retaining ring spanner I made many years ago. It's different to the size of the one used on retinas does the same job, same principle. Anyway, it loosened up without any argument at all, well, without much argument. And so I can get the retaining ring off. I'm just spinning that off with a screwdriver. If I was being more careful, I'd probably spin that off with a toothpick, perhaps. Okay, and that's loose, that's so. The shutter should lift off the body now. Now we'll have a flash sync contact there and we will also have the wires from the switch in the shutter. There's a switch and that will couple to something here I think. Yeah, 
So if I lift the shutter away, these wires are a little bit short, so they're a bit of a nuisance. Here's my flash contact here, and these two wires here go to the switch inside the shutter body. Now that switch, basically, it, what it does is it deactivates the meter when you turn this round to the flash setting. That's all it does. It doesn't, doesn't have any other magical properties. There's no resist, resistor behind it sending different signals to the meter. All it does is switch the meter off when you are on the flash setting of the shutter here. So I will have to unsolder those connections, which means poking in here with a little soldering iron, and then I'll have the shutter off. That was easy. Those wires unsoldered straight away. No arguments at all. So I'll pop the body to one side because mostly today I'm interested in doing this shutter. So I'll have a, have a close look at it now. I can see the rear lens group quite clearly. It's got a dusty appearance to it. And hopefully that is just dust and not deterioration of the rear lens surface. Now there is no uh, notches in the retaining ring for that rear lens element and typically I don't unscrew it, I don't take that off at all I will clean that in place and uh, that way it, it's not much more work and it avoids you having to try and get that retaining ring loose which has got no way of gripping it at all and uh, potentially having problems because you might make a mess of that retaining ring and leave an ugly, have an ugly shutter to deal with or worst case scenario when you're tightening it back up you might end up cracking your lens and that's even worse so we're going to leave that on there the only complication that brings to things is it means that when you are assembling the shutter you have to be mindful at all times that you've got your freshly cleaned glass lens element at the back there and you've got to avoid getting any contaminants on it or, and so forth. So looking at the shutter, what can I tell? Well, there's a pencil line here that someone's made. Now they would have made that there for a reason and it's probably to help them align things so that they knew the correct alignment of something. There's a screw head there, there's a little cutout in that ring so that locks that ring in that position presumably. And this little pencil line presumably helps the person who assembled it to put it in the correct orientation. There are actually three screw heads there visible. They are not um, equally spaced out, so there was no danger that you could actually put that ring in the wrong position. But someone's put a pencil mark there. I'm sure that this shutter has been serviced before, although the rest of the camera looks, there's nothing there to indicate anyone's been into it. And what have we got? Well, of course, it's a Prontor mat shutter. I'm looking at the, the uh, focus scale ring here. Now, how's that going to be held on there? Well, there's a couple of ways it could be held on there. This conical piece around the lens at the front may be holding it in. There may be three screws around the perimeter underneath this uh, focus scale here and uh, without bothering to go back through my my notes or looking at things I think that's probably going to be the way in so I will remove these two tiny screws and remove that focus scale and see if there are if the way in is through there. Yeah, that looks likely. I can immediately see there's a hole here, a hole here, and one round the other side where you can poke a screwdriver in and uh, loosen something up. Now, let's see if my screwdriver is going to do the job. This one might be slightly too big. No, that feels good.
can't quite feel that getting to the screw there. That was it. Okay, so there are three screws through from the outside, as I said. They're quite pointed. Um, one of them I can tell I've backed right out, the other two I've backed out to a lesser degree. So, that was our focus scale ring. Put that carefully to one side, particularly the two very short chrome plated screws, otherwise you don't want to lose those. So in from the front, the front group will unscrew. No tools required, that should just come out with your fingers. It may be stiff because the grease could be nasty, like this is pretty nasty. That, um, if it's dried out completely that could be a bit stiff, but you shouldn't need a spanner to get that loose. And what do we see here? Well we've got moving depth of field pointers here on this ring. Now they as you move this, which changes your aperture settings, the depth of field pointers also move. That's um, an entertaining little mechanism. It's not particularly complicated, but it's awkward. To get this whole front piece off in one piece, there's a little locking tab. So we can remove the screw from that, remove the locking tab, that locking tab just locks our retaining ring in place. Right here. And I want a toothpick to get that loose because I don't want to be making a mess of it by poking at it with a screwdriver. This should suffice. Let's see if it'll move for us. That is quite stiff. It's not moving. Yeah, it's moving now. Let's try a bit from one side, a bit from the other. That retaining ring is quite thin. It's aluminium. It's easily distorted. And if you distort it, well, it's hardly likely to make it easier to go on or off. I'm just going to go away and find a bamboo skewer because that's got more push than these nasty uh, toothpicks which they, they say they're made of birch but they're probably not made out of hard rhubarb see if this will do the job for me oh, it's playing hard to get a little drop of solvent there might help I think No, well I might have to uh, say, do what I said I wasn't going to do and use my tweezers. This is very stiff. Oh, I do hope it hasn't been cross-threaded. Okay, leave me to fight with this. I'll let you know how I get on. Well, it appears that it will come loose. A pair of tweezers. It is quite stiff. I'd it's not exactly turning freely. But it's off. Now the front ring should lift off in one piece like this. 
I'll be into that later and clean and service that but that's exciting so I mean if you're not feeling adventurous leave that piece alone just particularly if it worked fine to start off with there's um, no point in borrowing trouble what have we got here well this is the shutter speed settings cam plate this one here now yeah, shutter speed settings are here and as the cam plate revolves around these things here it'll swing that arm in or out further let's get that off the rings will lift off now I believe there they go I'm looking to see what we've got here we've got a coupling here is a pin here that couples into the ring here and, and revolves that. This is the piece that sends the, uh, the setting, if you like, to our meter. And it's a mechanical thing. Basically, as, as the shutter speed, as this control ring is turned, it swings this round. This cam surface here acts on a pin that comes in from the camera and pushes it inwards or lets it come out further. And that, in turn, through the magic of uh, cord and chain and so forth and pulleys swings the body of the meter left or right all right that looks quite good and there's nothing particularly frightening there to see this lever that controls the aperture and I can see there immediately that the aperture is not being controlled by it it should be swinging in and it's not. That lever picks up on this notch in the back of those control rings set there. So let's have this lever off. Three screws from the back of the shutter. Very shallow. Take that lever off. This outer ring might just as well come off. There's three screws holding that. They are shallow screws too, but they're bigger heads. They look to be much the same thread size. That retainer comes off and that, that ring will come off. Well the shutter is fairly well stripped in. So to the front of the shutter. I'm just looking at the state of this uh, front ring here. Now there's bits of aluminium there where the thread's broken away. Um, possibly just the last turn. Now that's most likely, it's come off this body, or it's come off this ring. I can't tell which. But if those little bits of aluminium were floating around loose in there, that would certainly make getting the lens in or the retaining ring around the outside somewhat awkward. Look at that rubbish. What do we need off from the front of the shutter? Well first I'll cock the shutter. Now it's cocked with this piece at the back here. Now I do have a special tool for doing this but you can do it with a pair of tweezers. So that's in the cocked position. Here's our retard gear train. Let's have that out. It's held in with two screws. There's one here at the end and one right at this end. That one right at this end also holds the flash contact. Just 
looking at those two screws to see if they're identical. They are. You should be able to lift this speed, this retard gear train out. To get it out, you always have to swing that arm in slightly so it'll lift out easily. But that'll need to go through the ultrasonic cleaner. And there's not much to see in the shutter now because there's nothing left in there but the B lever mechanism here in the basic, basic components of the shutter. The aperture, the diaphragm, that's pulled in one direction by this spring here. And I can tell you that's just clogged up, it's sticky, it'll be dried grease. I need to split the case from the mechanism plate and the obstruction stopping me from doing that is the pin that runs through this little cocking piece here. Now that pin, I don't believe it's tapered, it will have a knurled piece in the centre where, where it locks into that shaft. I've got a pair of tweed, uh, pliers here somewhere which will help me push that thing out. Of course it's virtually impossible to decide which way you want to push it out. I'll push on it with a pair of tweezers. It is stiff in either direction. It does not showing me any obvious way to go. We'll try with the pliers. Well these are my pliers. As you can see, they've got a little slot in the tip on one side. And it's just plain on the other. And hopefully I'll be able to push this pin out with these. Let's find out whether it'll do it for me. Doesn't want to go that way. Doesn't really want to go the other way. Yep, gave it an extra good push. That pin should come out. Of course the end's probably a bit unhappy looking now from being pushed with the pliers, so I may need to wriggle that a bit to get that out. Let's try releasing that. that. Get me somewhere better. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to get my pliers on that pin and pull it the rest of the way. That pin's out with only a minimum amount of struggle, so I'll tidy the ends of that up a bit with a small file before I put it back. But that deals with our immediate problem. Let's open the case. Three screws from the back of the case. One of these will be longer than the others and it holds back the tail of a spring. That's the long screw there. Make note of where that screw came from. You can figure it out later if you have to. But frequently a repairer will put a little mark next to the where that screw came out so they know where the long one came from. Does this shutter have four screws? That's a possibility. I should be able to lift this apart now. It's my flash, well no, the switch. There's that spring I was telling you about that was held back by that thing. The contacts here for that little switch are a little bit reluctant to come through the hole in the case. Here we go. And there's a shutter blade still stuck on the back of that backing plate because it's oily. But there's our shutter in pieces. Let's put that 
mechanism plate, you can see those sticky oily shutter blades there. Pop that to one side. Here's where the diaphragm is, and this is where we this was just not closing properly at all. That it, it's just just seems to be stuck. So that was that was certainly a problem, even though the camera appeared to work. The diaphragm was not closing down correctly. Yeah, it should close down like that, but this is just sticky with oil. It sprung loaded, it should snap back to the closed position. Okay, this it got, only got one screw holding that retainer plate in place. It relies on the mechanism plate being screwed down over it to retain it as securely as you'd expect it to be. Oh, there's, now there's one on the other side. I'll get this spring off. If I can get that off, its post will be in a better position here. It's a fine spring. Might be able to unhook it at the other end easier. Yeah, that, that's it. Let's see if I can get that spring off that post completely. Because otherwise it'll be in my way, and probably more importantly, I'm likely to end up losing it. Okay, so this is much too stiff. At this point you need to make sure you know exactly which way this plate sits, where it sits, so that you can put it back in exactly the same position. And it's worth taking note of where the, how the diaphragm blades are laid out so you can look at them. We'll be, we'll be assembling the diaphragm blades onto this plate, so we're mostly interested in the look of the blades from the other side to see which direction they run. Generally speaking, diaphragm blades can only be put in one way, but every now and then you come across something that you can assemble them back to front. And uh, I can think of shutters that'll do that. You put the blades in the wrong way, you end up with a magic shutter that starts open. You press the button, the blades close for a set time and then open again, um, which is not exactly how they're meant to work. Okay, so I'll we'll get a picture of this to make sure I know which way around those things sit. It'd be easier to see of course if that uh, lens wasn't in the way, but I'm not moving that. 